Hey everyone, my name is Cole. Am I making this video just so that I have another excuse to talk about the creator? Honestly, I'd be lying to you if I said that I wasn't. Gareth Edwards is one of my favorite directors right now, not just because I believe he's about to drop one of the most extraordinary and profound sci-fi films ever, but because he is so unbelievably talented. He is a remarkable director, but even a greater artist as a whole, and that is one of the things I will discuss in this video. Also, shout out to Roy Neary for this content idea. I wasn't planning on making this, but his idea alone made me think about how I should make the video and why it is important. As always, enjoy. Gareth James Edwards is a British filmmaker widely known for his hit Star Wars film, Rogue One, which led him to his upcoming film, The Creator, which I have two videos about on the channel and will be reviewing it once it drops on September 29th. But go check out those videos to hear me rant exclusively about the unreleased film. What is wrong with me? I've watched so many videos about Edwards in preparation for this video, and he is such a casual genius. When I say that, he isn't over the top in his explanation of certain techniques or filmmaking aspects, but he is so authentic and straightforward with his presentation. It's oddly charming and makes him more relatable. At one point, he was talking about what makes certain shots more than fucking cool, but rather utilizing scale to make scenes more atmospheric and digestible. He's a director who doesn't just know aspects of filmmaking, but can actually perform them with expertise. Like you just scale, like you just literally just turn a dial and something gets bigger. But then what you learn is there's a relationship going on and that something's only big when it's relative to something else. And that's the key, is always having the something else. If you just have something big, it means nothing. Like it's what it's also is in the frame or it's relative to. So, who is Gareth Edwards and how did he get here? Edwards first gained popularity for his 2010 indie sci-fi film, Monsters, which he served as director, writer, cinematographer, and visual effects artist. Yes, you heard that right. Edwards wrote, directed, shot, and handled VFX for his debut indie film. If that doesn't speak volumes about his passion, skill, and creativity, I don't know what will. He subsequently directed the Godzilla reboot for Legendary's MonsterVerse back in 2014, and as we all know, he directed Rogue One, A Star Wars Story the first installment of the Star Wars Anthology series, which was an immediate prequel to Star Wars Episode IV that connected to the first ever Star Wars film that inspired millions, including Edwards himself, once stating, Star Wars is definitely the reason that I wanted to become a filmmaker. That is something I truly value about filmmaking, when artists have the opportunity to work on franchises or films that inspired them to become artists in the first place. Additionally, as many of you know, Edward's fourth upcoming film, The Creator, is an original sci-fi thriller that is dropping this fall, my most anticipated film of 2023, and what I believe will be his best piece of art yet. Let's dive deeper into the origins of Gareth Edwards and what led to his debut film. Edwards studied film and video at the Survey Institute of Art Design in Farnham, graduating back in 1996. I don't know how to feel about that because that was four years before I was even born. Fuck. <laughs> What is wrong with me? In 2012, he received an honorary Master of Arts from UCA. As previously mentioned, Edwards has a rare talent as a director and has worked heavily with visual effects. Edwards got his start in visual effects spending over 10 years creating effects for prestigious shows such as Nova, Perfect Disaster, and Heroes and Villains, where he made over 250 visual effects which won international recognition. This achievement is noteworthy and you can tell this has paved a way in his work since all of his films are visually sensational. Now this is rather insane to know and I still can't believe it. In 2008, Edwards entered the Sci-Fi London 48 Hour Film Challenge, where a movie had to be created start to finish in just two days within certain criteria set by a collective. Gareth Edwards ended up winning the contest and went on to write and direct Monsters, his directorial debut. It's pretty shocking that not many know of his debut, as it is quite good and the background behind it is special from a filmmaking perspective. Gareth Edwards personally created the visual effects for Monsters using off-the-shelf equipment. Additionally, besides the two main actors, the crew consisted of just five people. The film takes place years after a NASA space probe crashed in Mexico, which leads to the arrival of giant alien monsters. As you could probably tell, the film is heavily inspired and similar to War of the Worlds. 
Monsters follows Andrew, an American photojournalist tasked with escorting his employer's daughter, Samantha, back to the United States to reunite with her fiancé and family by crossing through Mexico's infected zone where the creatures reside. Essentially, Monsters is about two humans who quickly grow their bond together and begin to fall in love with, of course, having to face the threat of aliens that's basically the background aspect of the film. Monsters, in my opinion, has its flaws, but it's a very character-focused and dialogue-heavy piece, like most of Edward's art, and I can't help but admire the work and passion behind the film. I recommend you watch it before the creator drops and let me know what you think. Crazy enough, Monsters had a budget of $500,000 and ended up making $4.24 million. Pretty great box office haul. The filming for Monsters took place in five countries, many locations were reportedly used without permission, most of the extras were people who were at these locations during filming and were persuaded to act in it. All of those extras' dialogue was completely improvised and Edwards provide outlines of the primary plot points to guide them along the way. A sequel to the film, Monsters Dark Continent, was released five years after the first entry, with Edwards having zero attachment to the project. So we are not going to discuss it because it's absolutely awful without his touch. If you have seen Monsters, you are quite aware of how influential it was in the selection of Edwards on his first big Hollywood film back in January of 2011, where the up and coming director was chosen to helm the 2014 reboot of Godzilla from Warner Bros. and Legendary Pictures. Godzilla was theatrically released on May 16th of 2014. There were countless positive reviews from critics who praised the direction, visual effects, music, cinematography, respect to the source material, and Cranston's performance for what little he had on screen, but criticized the script, characters, and Godzilla's insufficient screen time, many of which, in my opinion, are valid criticisms. Do I believe Godzilla is a bad film? Absolutely not. There is so much to adore, but also many things to dislike. Its cinematography is the most exceptional aspect of the film, leading to some of my favorite moments of the movie. The VFX, as with every Edwards film, were remarkable and his direction utilizing them was nothing short of perfect, making sure to make most scenes with Godzilla set at night to hide possible imperfections and for creative decisions with glowing effects for that beautiful aesthetic. The performance from Cranston was incredible, but he was barely in the film, which is a true shame. It's kind of funny because Godzilla was also barely in the film, the two best parts, you know, you see where I'm going with this? Anyway. Aaron Taylor Johnson sadly gave a very stale performance and it was surprising because I have a lot of respect for him and he's been some of my favorite movies. The biggest and most understandable criticism with Edward's Godzilla was, well, Godzilla was barely in the movie. If you have watched Monsters, both are very similar in how they handle their massive threat. Just like how Monsters handled its aliens, we barely see Godzilla and he was more built around the humans to give us a massive and powerful finale where we watch Big Lizard kill Big Monster. I'm not by any means bashing this film, but it does have its flaws. The film was a box office success, grossing $529 million worldwide against a production budget of $160 million, print and advertisement costs of $100 million, and a break-even point of $380 million. The film's success prompted Toho to produce a reboot of their own in Legendary Pictures to proceed with sequels and a shared cinematic universe, which led to, in May 2016, Edwards exiting Godzilla King of the Monsters and a peaceful split from the studio to work on smaller scale projects. Lucky for us, this led to Edwards' next big film. Gareth Edwards directed Rogue One, the first Star Wars standalone film, releasing back in December of 2016. We all know Rogue One. Whether you love it or hate it, admire it or despise it, we all know its name. This is by far Edward's biggest project and what he is best known for. Disney Star Wars has been a disappointment and disaster, each project after the next, but Rogue One is the only film, in my opinion once again, that has stood the test of time and over the years has aged into one of the best Star Wars films ever. I chalk this up to returning Star Wars to its origins. Edwards brought the war back to Star Wars. It wasn't about the Jedi or the Skywalkers, but about the sacrifices heroes take to save those alongside them and save the millions who need saving. Rogue One is such an intimate sci-fi war epic that amazes me with each viewing, reminding me that no matter where you come from, you have an opportunity to make a difference. And that's the beauty of Rogue One is that it's about sacrificing everything for the cost of humanity. Star Wars has been so focused on a select family, the Skywalkers, 
there's so much more you can explore in the Star Wars universe, and I truly believe that Gareth Edwards understood that, especially since he grew up as a Star Wars fan. It's quite baffling how Disney did not pick Gareth Edwards to direct their sequel trilogy, but of course they didn't have a plan to begin with, so maybe it wouldn't have worked out well either way. I will stop ranting, I will talk about some fascinating elements with Edwards in this picture. Gareth Edwards stated that the style of the film would be similar to that of a war movie, saying, It's the reality of war. Good guys are bad. Bad guys are good. It's complicated, layered, a very rich scenario in which to set a movie. Assuming Disney would not allow a dark ending, Edwards had the main character surviving in the original version of the script, but the producers opted for a more tragic ending and never filmed the original version, which I believe was the correct decision and I'm honestly shocked they went with it. Rogue One ended up grossing over $1 billion worldwide, making it at the time the 20th highest grossing film of all time and the second highest grossing film of 2016 during its theatrical run, continuing Edward's trend of box office success. I'm hoping the creator continues this trend, but my only worry is that the current strikes in Hollywood will affect the gross, but I just hope they don't delay the film to 2024 like Warner Bros. is likely to do with Dune Part 2. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Rogue One received two Academy Award nominations for Best Sound Mixing and Best Visual Effects. You can't help but respect that this film had passion and enthusiasm behind it, whereas every other Disney Star Wars project was made purely for money and financial gain. At the end of the day, I love Rogue One, and without it, we would never begin Edward's next project, which has found its way into my heart and my soul. A big question that popped up in my head when writing this script was, where has Edward's been all these years? Rogue One released in 2016, and it's now 2023. He helmed a Godzilla reboot and a Star Wars film, a quick and sudden rise to glory and fame that many believed would jumpstart his career, allotting him numerous directing opportunities. After all the information on this beautiful thing called the internet, it appears Edwards was spending a lot of time developing different projects, trying to find out what his next one is. I can imagine that he was wanting to return to slightly smaller films with less of a history and more originality. He finally got the green light for a sci-fi project with new Regency, but production got put on hold due to COVID for a few years, which will account for the seven year gap between films. But eventually, production began on his next project. Back in February of 2020, it was reported that Edwards was set to direct and write True Love, along with Rogue One co-producer Kiri Hart serving as producer for this project. The movie has since been renamed The Creator, thank God. The film is set to star John David Washington, who has starred in Tenet and Black Klansman. It notably marked his second collaboration with Rogue One cinematographer Greg Frazier, which this team up is looking to be one of the best director and cinematographer duos in history. As I stated in my previous video, there were rumors about Hans Zimmer being attached to the project. It has officially been confirmed that Edward's first collaboration with composer Hans Zimmer is set to be in the creator. If you have watched my first two videos about the creator, you know my feelings. I've talked about it enough, so I will show mercy in this video, but you should know that I am romantically obsessed with its existence and purpose, and not just to the cinematic landscape, but the world. Has Gareth Edwards given us a perfect filmography? No, but he is passionate. He is the embodiment of the word artist, and we desperately need more creatives of his skill set and talent. Oddly enough, despite directing for over 13 years, this is only his fourth directorial. He has not made a film in over 7 years since Star Wars Rogue One. He has countless decades of filmmaking left and I believe that the creator will be one of the greatest sci-fi films ever and Gareth Edwards' best picture thus far. Edwards has stated that his three biggest influences of filmmaking are George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and Quentin Tarantino. And that much is obvious. Here's to the future of Gareth Edwards, not just one of my favorite directors right now, but one of my inspirations and director influences. But that is all of the history that I was able to find, or at least that I felt was relevant to his current filmmaking history. And I also desired this opportunity to talk about his films as this is a director that I'm hyping up a lot and no one else is really talking about his upcoming film, so I wanted to discuss his filmography and his progression as a filmmaker. Of course, you can always do your own research, and if there's any cool facts or little bit of information you would like to share, please drop in the comments so others can see. I said this last video, but this time I actually mean it. This will be my last video about the creator, or I guess now Gareth Edwards, 
until the movie finally drops on September 29th where I am going to review the hell out of it, I promise you. And with that being said, are you excited for the creator? I sure am. I can't even fathom that this man hasn't directed anything in over 7 years. I am so excited to see what he creates, especially since this is an original idea and it's not just a big IP or well known franchise. Make sure to go check out my two videos on this film, which I can't believe I have two videos about an unreleased movie. Make sure to go like and subscribe and make sure to follow for more content about the creator. Additionally. You can also follow me on Letterboxd, Threads, and Instagram at Cold Protocol, where you can see all the films I rate and what's going on in my day-to-day -day life, but of course, I like to try and keep you guys updated on YouTube as much as possible. As always guys, peace.